there are two things that are true about me. I am an intensely driven person. When I set my mind to something, I will not give up on it, no matter what. And I am a people pleaser. I have a very strong desire to make people happy, especially those closest to me, like my parents. Both sound like admirable traits, and they usually are. My drive and perseverance helped me to become a respected physician and made my parents incredibly proud. But at times, this career ended up making me feel miserable. See, I was stuck between pleasing my parents and finding my own happiness, and I didn't know what to do. Until one day when everything changed. When I was growing up, my parents really wanted me to become an engineer or a physician. See, my dad was raised on a farm, and he was expected to become a farmer. But he overcame many challenges and was a very successful engineer at General Electric for 42 years. Now, my mom was only able to go to college for one semester, and she was deeply hurt and ashamed by this. So she wanted my sister and I to get the education she was unable to receive. And she thought a physician was the most prestigious profession, especially for a woman. So my older sister became the engineer, and what did I do? I became the physician. The path to becoming a doctor is not an easy one, but I knew it would make my parents, and especially my mom, incredibly happy, and there was nothing more important to me than that. Now, how many of you remember how George Clooney became famous? Well, he was on a wildly popular television show called ER back when I was applying to medical school, and everyone wanted to be a doctor just like him. In fact, my medical school class had over 10,000 applicants for less than 100 spots. But I never backed down from a challenge. So to bolster my application, I took some advanced biology classes, I became a nurse's aide in an Alzheimer's unit, and I was a volunteer tennis coach for Special Olympics. So out of 10,000 applicants, I was fortunate enough to be one of 92 selected. So, perseverance really does pay off. Now, medical school was an overwhelming experience for the best of the best that were admitted. But I was not going to disappoint my parents, and I persevered through those challenging four years. At the graduation ceremony, I can't even begin to describe the pride on my mom and dad's faces. My mom was practically glowing. See, I had achieved something so big and so important. I had achieved their goal for me. After graduation, we moved to Detroit, where I completed a residency in emergency medicine. See, now this was just like boot camp for the Marines. Very little sleep, constantly getting yelled at, and rotating through one difficult specialty after another. And on top of it, my oldest son Jackson was born during a rotation with the first responders of the city of Detroit. After residency, we moved to Florida, where I worked as a staff ER doctor in downtown Orlando for the next 10 years. During this entire process, of getting into medical school and medical school and residency, my parents were incredibly supportive. In fact, I would speak to my mom almost daily, and she would offer wonderful, comforting, encouraging words. And just hearing her voice was comforting at a very, very difficult time. They were very proud parents. I wouldn't dream of disappointing them. 
They wanted me to become a, su a successful physician, and I did it. However, no one really tells you what it's like to be an ER doctor. No one tells you that as rewarding as it is to save somebody's life, it's just as devastating as when you can't. And no one tells you people will come up with the most convoluted, over-the-top stories just to get pain medication from you. And no one tells you you will be a frontline witness to how incredibly evil people can be towards each other and sometimes towards themselves. And no one tells you you won't see much of your family which at this point had grown to three small sons. So, after 10 years, I felt completely burnt out. And despite being so close to my mom, I didn't feel like I could talk to her about these things because I was afraid of disappointing her. But it became harder and harder each day. And then my mom died, suddenly and unexpectedly. She was just 63 years old, and I was devastated. The death of a parent always triggers some soul searching. I started to think about what I really wanted to do with my life. I knew I no longer wanted to work clinically, but I lacked the courage to do anything about it. In fact, it took me almost two years to figure out how I could leave the ER. See, I loved the people that I worked with. I felt like I was good at the job. I enjoyed the prestige of the position, and we needed the money. And to complicate things, I've always really hated change. But most of all, I grew up believing I really wanted to be a physician. I never thought of doing anything else. But I slowly built up the courage, and I got a necessary nudge when my husband's company was acquired and I had to leave my position in Orlando. And I knew I did not want to start over in a new hospital, in a new city, in a new ER. So I spent the next few years being a full-time mom, and I loved every minute of it. But I made a big discovery about myself that's probably true for most people. The only thing worse than having an incredibly stressful, demanding career is not having one at all. I felt like a part of my identity was missing. Everything in my family, everything in my life now revolve around my family, who I love dearly. But I felt like there was nothing left that was just me. So I asked myself the question, what do I want to do now that I'm grown up? My parents had sent me down the path of being a doctor, but now I could do anything I wanted. I just didn't know what that was. I briefly dabbled in telemedicine, but I found I wasn't particularly interested in seeing patients remotely. A friend of mine left clinical medicine to work as a medical claims analyst, but I couldn't think of anything more boring than a desk <laughs> job. So there I was, my career as a physician behind me, struggling to find my new identity my new direction, my new path forward. As I went through this self-reflection, I was reminded of the happiness and the security I felt when I would watch my mom bake when I was little. It felt just magical watching her create something wonderful out of just a few simple ingredients. And how when I was a little older, I was able to help make treats for family get-togethers. And how I routinely brought desserts into the ER during my shifts at the hospital. The more I thought about it, the more excited I became. I love baking. 
I love the creative aspects of it. I love creating a new dessert or adding a new twist to an old favorite. But most of all, I love seeing the smiles these treats put on people's faces. So I decided to open a bakery. Now, I know I'm not the first home baker who's dreamt of opening her own shop. I'm sure the thought has crossed the mind of anyone who loves to bake as much as I do. But turning that dream into a reality required the same type of grit and perseverance that it took to become a physician. Like finding the right location, which I found in picturesque historic Mount Dora, Florida, and finding a wonderful, talented um, contractor and designer for the remodel, and finding a great, talented group of bakers and baristas to begin this journey with me, and figuring out how to make bake-from-scratch items on a commercial scale without cutting corners, and most of all, hoping and praying people would show up when I opened my doors. And they did, beyond my wildest expectations. Friends came in to support me, as well as former colleagues from the hospital, but also lots and lots of new faces, many of whom would become friends. When I arrived home after that first day, exhausted and covered in flour, I remember taking a few minutes to reflect on the day. And I realized it didn't matter so much that I didn't have the same respect and prestige as a baker that I had as a physician. It just mattered that I was doing what I truly loved. See, I found my new identity that day. This business was uniquely mine. Becoming a physician was always my parents' passion for me. But this shop, this shop was my passion. So I went from taking care of people during the worst moments of their lives to putting smiles on people's faces every day. There's even a little boy who does a little dance when his dad tells him they're coming to my shop. And I named my shop Allison A. Bake Shop. In memory and in celebration of my mother, Allison, who my dad affectionately called Allison A. <laughs> and that little boy that dances, he calls it his Allison A dance. Now, do you remember my son, Jackson, who was born during my residency in Detroit? Well, he had just graduated from high school a couple years ago, and it was his turn to decide what he wanted to do with his life. He was all set to start college. In fact, he earned a scholarship to business school, just like my husband. But about a month or two before college, he came to me and said, Mom, I don't want to go to college. I want to be a Marine. Well, this shouldn't have come as a surprise to me, as he's always loved all things military history and strategy. But it was. And despite every parent's strongest desire to protect their child and keep their child out of harm's way, I encouraged him to follow his passion. Some of my perseverance must have rubbed off on him because the physical and mental challenges to becoming a Marine are difficult for even me to comprehend. But he persevered and he succeeded. And I am so proud of him for following his passion. I honestly don't know what my mom would think about me today. Perhaps she would think I was a quitter, just like she felt when she left college. Or perhaps, and hopefully, she just wanted me to be happy, regardless of the path I took to find that happiness. 
Just like how I feel about my son Jackson doing what makes him happy, even though it wasn't necessarily the path I would have chosen for him myself. Two things that are true about me today. I am still an intensely driven person. That will never change. And I am still a people pleaser. But I now recognize the first person who needs to be happy is me. Not in a selfish way, but I now recognize it's easier to make other people happy when you yourself are happy. I followed my passion and I found my joy. I'm doing what I love and it gives me tremendous fulfillment. But my story isn't just about following your passion. It's not that simple because life is not simple. Following your passion requires grit and perseverance, and it's often complicated by family and relationships, and it's intertwined with your sense of duty, identity, and self-worth. Following your passion will not be easy. Expect it to be a struggle, like it was for me. But trust me, it will be worth it. Thank you.